mean, the idea of being in Big Bear was to drive the rancher over a boat in its element. We decided to go up from Los Angeles into the mountains here. We're about 7,000 feet, something like that, in Big Bear. Do some skiing, do some snowboarding, depending on your generation, and to see how the evoke uh, works out in that kind of situation. It's a California cliche. Oh, we're skiing in the morning, we're sailing in the afternoon, so we're going to do that, though. I don't know anybody who's actually done that. Exactly, that's what we want to prove. You know, we hear that all the time. Oh, I can ski in the morning, I can surf in the afternoon, mm -hmm. I can sail in the afternoon, I'm so close to the ocean. Never met anybody in 30 plus years in Los Angeles that's actually done that. But today, we're going to do that. Is a video about skiing and sailing in the same day just a boondoggle to have fun while on the clock? Well, yes. But it also enables an excellent test of a vehicle's versatility. We thought the Range Rover Evoque would be a great choice because it is fun to drive, nimble on the road, and it has excellent ground clearance and big tires. That's useful stuff during encounters with potential deep snow. On top of that, the Evoque's handy size could hold all of our cold weather stuff. So properly fueled with carbs and coffee, we climbed into the Evoque to complete the first portion of our two-part quest, namely morning skiing in Big Bear. That's a woodsy community nestled in the San Bernardino Mountains, northeast of Los Angeles. Colleague Mike Amusio chose snowboarding just to rub in how much cooler he is than I am. We're going to Learning Curve and then Easy Street. What does that tell you about our skill levels? We're challenging ourselves big time, right? <laughs> The evoke inspiring you to ski better? Uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> now that's not an indictment of the car. The no, car no. itself is a uh, hell of a car is terrific. Okay, the conditions at Bear Mountain Ski Area weren't great. Because of the odd combination of a long drought and an early morning rainstorm, there were more bare spots than on the top of Pitbull's head. And some of the snow cover resembled a Slurpee. That being said, we still had a blast, and I had to wrench myself from the slopes to continue the journey. Back in the Evoke, we set the navigation system to King Harbor and pointed the Range Rover's attractive nose down the mountain. This proved to be an enjoyable bonus portion of our trip. Ski sail and a great drive. In spite of the rainstorm, it was a day turning into perfection. I have to admit, we pushed it a bit on the windy portions of State Route 18 that led out of Big Bear. Even so, the Evoke proved quite willing to please with predictable handling. Despite some turbo lag from its 240 horsepower four-cylinder, the Evoke never felt at a loss for power, even at the lofty altitude of 7,000 feet. The fact that we were getting 30 miles per gallon didn't hurt either. How was the uh, drive down the mountain? You talking to me? Uh, <laughs> How's Jack's driving down the mountain, Mike? It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> got the motion in the pocket, uh, got the footage we needed, uh, did some crossover lane change action. Sometimes I mean, really, with the proper turn signal on. Yeah. Okay, not to get all meta, but uh, we may as well talk about the video that we're making while we're making the video. Uh, that's one of those challenges you don't think about, is the fact that when you're doing car-to-car -car footage, you have to keep the car in a very specific space, and you kind of need enough power to pull into that spot, and you need decent brakes so that once you overshoot the camera car, you can get back into position quickly. So uh, from that perspective, how did the car perform? I think it performed very well, but there was a hit of turbo lag. More torque would be great to have, but at the same time, I think this uh, vehicle uh, acquitted itself quite well. It seemed very precise, and that's important. I got to use the brakes a lot. <laughs> they stayed with us the, the entire time, and were very precise too. So overall, high marks. And we're driving from Big Bear Lake, where we started very near a marina, to uh, King Harbor Marina in Redondo Beach, California. Hey Jack, what's in, uh, in uh, King Harbor? Well, there's a sailboat there I know of. Whose sailboat? Uh, I have a sailboat there. Hey! Yeah. You know how the, uh, there's no better truck than the one that your buddy owns? Because you get to use it when you are moving stuff. The best sailboat is the one that uh, that your boss and friend Jack Arnirad owns because then you have to pay all those expensive costs about you know, putting in the slip and everything like that. You just get the breeze on board and go sailing like it's that Christopher Cross song from the 70s. There is something to that. There's a lot to be said for knowing somebody with a good boat and having a good relationship with them. So, you know, work on that relationship, will you, Micah? 
Our eyes were on the clock and the sun as we transitioned from State Route 330 to the 210 freeway that would take us toward the Pacific Ocean and our rendezvous with my sloop. Lying between us and the marina was something like 70 miles of traffic-clogged freeways. But if the Evoke was in its element on the pretzel twists of the mountain roads, it was equally well-suited to Southern California's woeful stop-and-go. And that's not something the Chamber of Commerce likes to talk about. The vehicle's ready power and compact size allowed us to dart into traffic gaps that big SUVs wouldn't have dared to enter. We zipped across the city, exited the 91 freeway, and quickly made our way to Redondo Beach, where a sailboat waited for its crew. In King Harbor, the Evoke immediately grabbed attention. It generated a quick congregation of other sailors who know a good-looking shear when they see one. With the sun still well over the horizon and the wind picking up in anticipation of another winter storm, the goal of skiing and sailing on the same day was within our reach. What, what's, the, what's the name of your boat? Your name here. <laughs> We pulled off the sail cover, rigged the jib sheets, and took the covers off the Dodger ports. By 4.30, we were motoring out of the harbor entrance as both the jib and main filled with a freshening breeze. There's a lot of stuff happening with ropes I don't quite understand, uh, but I think as long as Jack isn't screaming at me not to do what I'm doing, I think I'll be okay. Just gotta keep aiming in that direction. Clear of the swell at the harbor mouth, I killed the engine, silence closed around us, and we were sailing. officially completed the California cliche. How's it feel? <laughs> Feels really good, actually. Yeah, I, I'd suggest a high five if it wasn't yeah. some cheese Yeah, ball. well, let's do it. So, so. Okay. Ah, all right. <laughs> I'm old school. <laughs> actually, if I really old school, I'd shake hands. It's really cool. We've yeah. heard that we could do this. We've never done it. I, spo uh -huh. I suppose the big question is, uh, what role did the Range Rover Evoke play in our uh, adventure? That, you're right, spot on. You should be doing videos or something. <laughs> I think it played a great role, actually. I think it was a perfect car for what we did. Yeah? Yeah. I think it, it got uh, got us where we needed to go uh, very safely. I felt real safe last night, for example, through fog and, you know, difficult weather, rainy weather, all kinds of stuff. Felt just fine today. Carried fact, our I, gear ably. Absolutely. Carried our gear ably. And I think the thing about the uh, Evoke 2, we might not have said up till now, it looks great. Mm -hmm. The thing is gorgeous. And I think the four-door is just as gorgeous as the two-door. And uh, I think when you see it in person, it's just cool, mm. you know? When we rolled into your, uh, you know, the parking lot at King Harbor, uh, the dude that uh, walked up to us was like, that looks like fun. Right, immediately. Yeah. yeah. Immediately gets attention. You know what that means? He's jealous. Absolutely. Mission accomplished. Right. And what was he driving? Oh, hell if I know. A five series BMW. Was so, he really? Yeah. Huh. So. I guess more than anything uh, from uh, my personal perspective, last time I drove the Evoke to drive an adventure, it was a total failure. This time, <laughs> rousing success. Rousing success. And what was the difference there? Uh, what was the difference? It, it, what key factor was different in this this event than the previous event? I know what you're getting at, but I'm not going to say it was you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, you are my boss. I got to say, Jack Nirad, plus the power of the Range Rover Evoke, it just made for an amazing adventure. Yeah, it did. As the sun began to set, it struck me that the Range Rover Evoke has a lot in common with both skiing and sailing. It's dynamic yet effortless, and like a great athlete, it makes the difficult seem easy and the impossible seem attainable. I'm glad it gave us the chance to test this urban legend, and this is a legend we proved to be true. I don't know about Micah, but I'd do the whole thing again in a heartbeat. adventures today but that that might have been my favorite <laughs> sailing sailing plus quadcopter oh, that's yeah. great. 